already described, as we've shown, sigma 1, 1, like this. Corresponding logic, sigma 2, 2, right, would be for a force is, that is in the y direction, and I'll put my axes back here again for you. So, it'd be a force applied in the y direction, and a force applied in the y direction to make a couple, and it's on the face that is perpendicular to the y direction, so that clearly gives us sigma 2, 2. Okay, so we've described both sigma 1, 1 and sigma 2, 2, and we can describe some of the other terms that uh, are given here. Sigma 1, 2 is going to be for a force in the one direction, but it has to be applied on the two face. So it's going to be a force that points this way, right? It's a, it has to be a force that points in that direction, but it has to be applied on this face. And since in order to get a stress, we need a couple, there also has to be an arrow that's on the bottom here, and I'm going to draw it a little bit below. Right. That makes that is the force couple for force applied in the x direction on the two phase, and that gives us sigma one two. So that's sigma one two. How do we get sigma two one? Well, it has to be a force applied in the two direction on the one phase, and so that's sigma two one. And the Equal and opposite one has to be there. And you can see with that combination of forces, we have a, essentially a two-dimensional set of forces. There are no forces in the z direction. And we can describe that by the set of equations as the forces F1 are related to stress sigma 1, 1, stress sigma 1, 2, respectively applied to A1 and A2. F2 is given by the same logic. And we can describe this condition of plane stress using really the definition for a second rank tensor. This is a vector quantity and this with the three with the, the terms that are described in it, it becomes a second rank tensor property albeit in this case just in two dimensions. So if we take that one step further and we actually allow for a three-dimensional stress state we can describe the following set of relations and see if we can describe the, uh, the individual terms here. If we take the uh, uh, set of equations that's described here, F1, F2, and F3, the areas are distributed throughout, and we have sigma 1, 1, sigma 2, 2, and sigma 3, 3. We can describe the whole thing as a second rank tensor in three dimensions as is described here. We have the three terms along the di diagonal, right? The diagonal defines the normal stresses, stresses that include forces that are applied normal to the area, and the other terms that we see here define the shear stresses. And so these terms are the shear stresses. Now there's a special relationship between these stresses, and that is that sigma 2 1 and sigma 1 2, sigma 1 3 and sigma 3, 1, and sigma 3, 2, and sigma 2, 3, across each of those, those terms have to be equal. That is, sigma 1, 2, sigma 2, 1, sigma 1, 3, sigma 3, 1, and sigma 2, 3, sigma 3, 2, have to be equal. Why do they have to be equal? Well, let's take an example. Let's just take the corresponding values sigma 2, 3, and sigma 3, 2, and let's draw a coordinate system. So I'm going to use a different coordinate system for this case, and I'm actually going to tie it to the cube here. So I'm going to define this axis as the z-axis. I'm going to define this axis as the y-axis, and correspondingly, this has to be the x-axis, since x crossed into y, right-hand rule gives me z. 
And let's define these terms, sigma 2, 3, and sigma 3, 2. So with the description that we used before, F2, if there's only one individual stress, and A3, give us sigma 2, 3, using F3 for these terms would give us sigma 3, 2, corresponding to A2. So let's draw these individual stresses, sigma 2, 3, and sigma 3, 2, on the diagram above. So force pointing in the, in the two direction on the three face is this couple. Force in the, in the z direction on the two or y face gives us this direction. And we have those shear stresses. Notice that if this couple and this couple were not equal, then we'd have the possibility that this would have be rotating, accelerating in rotation either this way or this way. So these have to be equal if we're going to keep this stationary. So this tells us that we have a stationary element. Because this cube is usually an element or a piece within a structure or material. We aren't just deforming or thinking about things applied to this cube. Usually this cube is a representative volume element of a given material.